Are you preparing to install a sprinkler system or just replace some of your broken, clogged, or inefficient sprinkler nozzles? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm going to show you the best professional grade nozzles on the market and where to get them. Tom Lanier here with Sprinkler Pros. In this video, I'll show you the difference between male and female pop-up nozzles and which is better along with which stationary and adjustable nozzles are best. Don't assume you know because I'm sure my answers will surprise you. Be sure to stick around to the end of this short video to get your free downloads to help you with your irrigation projects. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and click the notification bell so you'll know when my new videos are available. In my business, I am picky about what I choose to use for each type of item, whether it's nozzles, pop-ups, timers, valves, etc. Because it depends on which manufacturer puts out the best for each item, so be sure to check out my other best of videos as they are uploaded to see the winners in each category. To begin with, in this video, I am only discussing standard nozzles. I will discuss what are called multi-trajectory nozzles in a future video. All right, gender equality is a big topic right now, and it's going to be an important part of this intro, as you'll see in a moment. There are two important differences in the realm of pop-ups and nozzles, which are male and female. Yes, there are genders in the irrigation world, and no, there are no gender-neutral pop-ups. Here is the biology regarding pop-ups and nozzles. This part of the pop-up is called the body. This is the bonnet, and this is the shaft which I am holding up using this handy Rainbird pull-up tool, which you can find on my resources page linked below. Normally, when you buy a pop-up, it will come with a flush cap. This is designed to direct the spray of water away from you or anything you don't want to get blasted when you first install a pop-up so you can flush the line in case debris got in the pipe or pop-up when you installed it. When you buy pop-ups at the home center or hardware store, the pop-up will often come with a 15-foot adjustable nozzle pre-installed. Many people don't know any different and assume that this is a one-size-fits-all nozzle and just go with it regardless of the distance that they need the nozzle to spray. I don't recommend buying pop-ups this way. You should buy the nozzles that are best suited for each pop-up location. If the area is much smaller than 15 feet, let's say like 9 feet in this situation, then there will be a lot of unnecessary overspray and water waste. There are nozzles that will spray as little as 4 feet and step all the way up to 18 foot adjustable nozzles. There are also side strip nozzles that spray a narrow strip of water for special situations like this. The gender of the pop-up is dependent on the nozzle thread. Each manufacturer decides whether they want a male or female design for their pop-ups. Anyway, is there a better or worse design? Yes, there is, and I'll explain why. When you install a female thread nozzle, you simply drop in the proper screen or filter, or whatever you want to call it, and then screw on the nozzle. Easy peasy. You can see the proper screens on my resources page I have linked below. Conversely, when you want to remove the nozzle and screen, hang on, this seems fundamental, but you'll see in a moment why I'm telling you all this. Okay, when you remove it, you unscrew the nozzle and easily grab the screen and voila! Even if the screen is full of crud and is stuck in the shaft, you can still easily grab the screen with a pair of pliers or needle nose pliers and remove it. Here's the difference. On a male thread pop-up like Toro's, you drop the screen down, down, down into the shaft and screw the nozzle on. Now, when you need to remove the screen, you need to use something like this small channel lock brand screwdriver and attempt to drag it out. 
if it is stuck for any reason, including being clogged with debris, you'll have a tough time, if not impossible. If your screwdriver accidentally scores the threads on the inside of the shaft, you're toast. And you have to dig up and replace the entire pop-up, unless you just replace the guts. But the point is, the waste of a pop-up and time just because you can't get the screen out. This has happened to me many times over the years. When I replace that pop-up, I replace it with a female thread pop-up, which I discuss in the other best of video about pop-ups, which I'll link above and below. Next, we'll discuss the difference between stationary nozzles and adjustable nozzles and which is preferable. Okay, this is a stationary nozzle. It's available in many different spray distances and radiuses, or commonly called patterns, such as quarter spray, half spray, and full spray. There are many other patterns available as well. They're color-coded according to the spray distance to make it easier to identify them once they're installed. This 10-footer is blue, while the 15-footer is black. Since I'm not a fan of the male thread pop-ups, we'll only be discussing the female thread nozzles from now on. The two top manufacturers of professional grade female thread pop-ups and nozzles are Rainbird and Hunter. In my best of video, I discuss which I prefer and why. Be sure you get the right nozzle for the right location. I'll go in detail on that in a design video, but one hot tip right now is that you want the sprays to reach from pop-up to pop-up. That's what we call head-to-head -head coverage. Also, if the distance you want to reach is 12 feet, then you'll want a 15-foot nozzle. Why? Because the distances for the nozzles are created in a windless environment inside a building with perfect water pressure and level ground. This isn't real world. Without boring you with all the scenarios, I'll, let's just say that a 15 footer will rarely spray 15 feet. Here are the differences between the Rainbird and Hunter stationary nozzles. The Rainbird nozzles feel sturdier and the color coding is on top of the nozzle, which helps me quickly identify the nozzle distances from a glance. So between the two major stationary nozzle brands, Rainbird is the winner. Stick around to see who wins the adjustable nozzle category and where to buy all these nozzles. Now that you've been introduced to stationary nozzles, let's dive into adjustable nozzles and why one brand is better than the other. This is Rainbird's adjustable nozzle and this one is Hunter's. Again, they are color coded according to the distance they spray and both manufacturers use a different color code. Rainbird's 10-foot adjustable, for instance, is called a 10-van for variable arc nozzle. It's blue, yet Hunter's 10-foot adjustable, called a 10A for adjustable, is red. Here's how you adjust Rainbird's van nozzles. I'm showing you how to do this in this video because I'm making a point as to which adjustable nozzles are better. The stationary side of the nozzle is the left side, so that means you screw the nozzle snug onto the pop-up, then turn the shaft so that the left stationary mark lines up with the left edge of your watering area. Then you have to attempt to hold the nozzle below this collar and turn the collar with the other hand to get the mark to move to the right side where your right watering edge is. The Rainbird van nozzles usually get jammed over time due to calcification from the water and so become difficult or impossible to adjust later. This is a hassle compared to the Hunter nozzle. I'll show you in a moment. The other main issue is how brittle they are. The tops on these easily break off when hit by string trimmers, commonly called weed whackers mowers or other tools like shovels or edgers. These photos are an example of what I've found on just one yard recently. We have all seen split and cracked spray nozzles with distorted spray patterns and even mini geysers throwing water everywhere but the intended landscape. Here we have two 12-foot nozzles or 3.7 meter nozzles 
watering at the exact same pressure using a 30 PSI or 2.1 bar pressure regulated pro spray pop-up. The competitor nozzle lacks definition at the edges, requiring overcompensation of the arc and more water to make up for the weak left edge. The water droplets are also very fine, no matter the arc, creating mist that floats away instead of delivering water to the target. The Hunter Pro adjustable nozzles have crisp, well-defined edges in any arc position, and the heavier droplet size gets the water onto the landscape instead of blowing away onto paved areas. The Hunter Pro adjustable nozzle is robust enough to provide years of trouble-free operation, while the competition will lead to more maintenance calls. The Hunter adjustable nozzles are tough and easy to adjust. Their color coding is on top for easy identification. Hunter's stationary side of the nozzle is the right side. It's marked on top with this little bump. So here's a pro tip. I keep black and silver Sharpies in my clip-on tool pouch for several purposes. Uh, purposes. In this case, I use it to highlight that bump because it becomes difficult to see in dark, shaded, or even very bright reflective situations. I use silver on the brown 12 footers and black 15 footers, and I use the black Sharpie on all the other colors. I have never seen a Hunter adjustable nozzle break, nor have I seen one get stuck over time due to calcification. Now that you understand the difference between stationary and adjustable nozzles, when should you use one over the other? You should always choose stationary nozzles when the situation allows because they don't get out of adjustment. And they are much easier to relieve of debris with a mini screwdriver. The adjustables are nearly impossible to relieve of debris and every time you need to remove the nozzle to clean out the screen, you may have to adjust the nozzle again and possibly get soaked in the process. So there you have it. The winner for stationary nozzles is Rainbird and the winner for adjustable nozzles is Hunter. Click the link below to go to my ever-growing resources page where you can click to buy these pop-ups and nozzles mentioned on these two best of videos along with timers, valves, tools, etc. that will be discussed in upcoming videos. I'll be releasing more best of videos so be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the next videos are available. I have free downloads that, you can, that can help you with your irrigation projects that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Just click down below. What sprinkler system questions do you have that you'd like a video for? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.